So we are moving forward, and our next speakers are Don Krha, Krha, I'm sorry, uh, and uh, Lee Brimelo from Adobe. Uh, they will tell you what's possible with Flash Player 11 and what's new coming on Flash and, Ro and AR Roadmap. So please welcome. So it's really good to be presenting here today, um, and what we're going to be talking about primarily is Stage 3D. Um, this is our, you know, our new rendering engine inside of Flash that basically takes what you can do in Flash and Air to the next level. And we're going to break it up into a couple of different parts. I'm going to focus primarily on 2D, the 2D game side of Flash, and then Tom is actually going to, to talk about 3D stuff. So what is Stage 3D? Well, in essence, it's a new GPU-accelerated rendering engine for Flash. Um, now, unfortunately, the name Stage 3D is actually not I don't think it's a very good name for the technology because it implies that it's only for 3D, and it's not. It works equally well for 2D as well. So basically, it's a way in which you can do pure GPU-accelerated content for Flash Player. So before we actually, um, before we actually get deep in, into Stage 3D and what it is, it's best to just show a demo to, to get it started. So at Adobe Max this year, let me actually minimize this. So at our Adobe Max conference this year, we demoed uh, the Unreal Engine from Epic, which was actually ported to Flash. Now, and this error is expected, by the way. But the way, yeah, the reason is because this demo is actually bigger than 1024 by 768, so it's expected. Um, but anyway, so Epic actually ported their entire Unreal Engine to Flash. So this is a demo that, that we showed, and it's primarily optimized for PCs, but it actually runs really well even here on the Mac. Now it takes, this is just a technology demo, so you can, it takes like a second to load up here. But now you can see it's doing, uh, this is their Epic Citadel demo. And this is now doing a walkthrough of this. And this isn't video, this is actually, you know, live 3D stuff. And now I can actually uh, start moving around in this scene. So this was actually optimized for the iPad, this demo. Um, so you can see these little touch controls. Uh, on either side, um, but I can still move around here with, with my mouse and just the keyboard here. Um, but you can see this is the, the full Epic Citadel demo running, and this is not some uh, gaming laptop that I'm running this on. This is just a regular uh, MacBook Pro. So just to show you some of the detail, if I go outside, you can see things like this this river here. You know, it's just amazing detail that, that we're seeing. Um, now, uh, Epic is currently working on this technology with us, so this is an early uh, an early uh, technology demo. Tom's going to show a little bit more uh, when we get to the the 3D section. Um, but you can see now the Flash Player is going to be capable of doing these AAA level uh, type games right inside the Flash Player. So uh, it's a really exciting time. Now, don't let this scare you away. If, if, you're, if you like building just simple, more casual games, um, you know, this is kind of the high end of where Flash is going. Um, and that's why we're, we're starting to call Flash now the console, the gaming console for the web, because you can do this type of stuff. So pretty exciting. <laughs> Are you excited, Tom? I'm really excited. I'm, I'm so excited that I'm sweating. Like, yeah, he's sweating. Uh, <laughs> it, it's because Flash just brings so much excitement, you don't know what to do with it. Yeah. And it, it just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to explode, you know, like uh, yeah. a try to, try to wait till after the session to okay. explode. Yeah. yeah, that'd be good. So, 
I, I showed you that demo, right, which is a, you know, basically what a first-person shooter type game would be. But the Flash player has some really serious limitations when it comes to building games like that. Now, one of the big limitations is mouse lock or mouse control. Because if I'm playing a first-person shooter and I'm using my mouse, if I go to the edge of the Flash movie, it's just going to stop, right? So some guy is over here trying to kill me, and I try to go over here, I can't go, he blows my brains out. You know, that doesn't, it's not going to work. So we have some new features in the Flash player uh, coming that's specifically for this. And um, we're now implementing mouse lock for first-person shooter games which will essentially lock the mouse so that you can move freely in, in any direction. Another exciting thing for Flash games is that you're going to be able to now respond to right-click and middle-click events. So when you're, we're first going to do it in full-screen games. So when you're in full-screen, if you right-click, you won't see that the, the little stupid Flash right-click menu. You can actually you can actually make right click, make some like a game menu for your game. So, uh, so it's really important. I want to show you really quick the uh, what that mouse lock looks like. Uh, let's see here. So here's a demo. It's just like a basically a skybox that I can look around. And here's the way it is in, in Flash today. So you can see it when I'm moving my mouse to the right. See, I'm, I, I'm still moving it, but the thing is not moving. If I go to the left, it just stops because my mouse has actually hit the edge of the Flash movie. And the same thing when I go up and down. But if I hit Tab here, this now unlocks uh, the mouse. So you can see I can move all the way down here. Yeah. Can I? You can, actually. Well, you can, <laughs> you can just, to, just to, to show you. you know. <laughs> it works. It works. See, I can go all the way. Now, it's unlikely you need a game that goes that far. But, so you can see that, that you'll now be able to do these first-person shooter type games. So, you know, all of this stage 3 is really cool, but how, a, how are you as game developers going to be programming stage 3D? And it really depends on the type of programmer you are. So undoubtedly, you're, still, you're going to be writing action script in order to program stage 3D games. But most game developers are going to take advantage of 2D and 3D frameworks that are out there that actually do all of the hard work for you, all of the low-level uh, stage 3D stuff, so that you can just focus on building your game. These frameworks will actually program the low-level stage 3D code, which is kind of similar to OpenGL. Then stage 3D APIs will, will tap into OpenGL, OpenGL ES2, DirectX, and then finally, those technologies are what actually taps into the GPU. But for most people, like I said, you're just still going to be writing regular action script. You're not going to have to program at a really low level if you take advantage of these frameworks. So there's a whole bunch of high-level frameworks that are being developed out there in the community. And this is just a, a small sampling of some of them. Um, Alternativa, which is one of the best out there, which is actually a, a, where's Anton, is he in here? Yeah. Oh, there he is right there. See, that, that, that handsome guy over there, he's, uh, he's one of the brains behind Alternativa. Um, but there's lots of other ones. Flare 3D, Minko, Away 3D, Unity, the, uh, the very popular gaming tool, is working on a stage 3D exporter. Uh, we, we saw the, the Epic Unreal Engine stuff. Um, so there's a, a, a huge number of frameworks for you to choose from. Um, and they all have different uh, strengths and weaknesses. So, but there's plenty of good ones out there. So, 3D is great, right? But what about 2D? So Tom is more of a guy who's like the 3D guy. He likes to play his like, like console games, right? I played Bejeweled, 
uh, you know, like I could play that. Like, so I'm more of a casual guy. I like I like 2D games. So what's important to know about stage 3D is stage 3D is equally important for 2D games, not just 3D games. And just to highlight, uh, because uh, you know these 3D games that are out there are kind of the most impressive from a from a demo standpoint. But what are the most popular games uh, in the world right now, or, or at least on mobile? You know, Cut the Rope, Canto Jour. Yeah, who the developer is here, he's probably not in this session, but uh, we have Bejeweled, which is one of my favorite, Angry Birds, uh, Tiny Wings, Words with Friends, things like that. These really, really popular uh, games that are doing tremendous business are not crazy 3D experiences. So one of the things that we did at Adobe was we funded an open source project called Starling. And Starling basically makes it very easy to build 2D games using Stage 3D. Um, and the API for Starling is based directly on the Flash Display List API. So here is actually, um, here is some sample code from Starling. So I create a new sprite, and I call it Hero. I set its X position. I set its Y position. Maybe I want to respond to an enter frame event on, on this, this particular sprite. And then I add that sprite to the display list. So one of the things you'll notice right away is, wait a minute, that's, it, that's just regular flash display list code. And that's, that's exactly how Starling was designed. So if you already know how to do regular uh, display list type of action script, you're going to be able to do Starling right away. It's very, very simple. So Starling has a lot of built-in features inside of it, specifically for game developers. One of the things is built-in sprite sheet support, which is obviously very important if you're building games. Now the next version of Flash Professional actually includes built-in support for doing sprite sheets. And I want to show you that really quickly. So I'm going to open up this FLA that I have. And this just contains some animation uh, that Chris Georginus created, who's a really good Flash character animator. And you can see I have these two animated graphics in the library, and that's just what it looks like there. So again, this, this animation is done in Flash, so it takes advantage of vector animation, timeline, tweens, and all of that type of stuff. But if I want to export this for a sprite to, uh, as a sprite sheet to use in my game, I can just right-click inside of the library, and you can see I have this option called Generate Sprite Sheet directly from that clip. I can also export a regular PNG sequence if I wanted to. Um, but I'm going to click Generate Sprite Sheet. And now this opens this native Sprite Sheet export dialog window. And you can see what it does is it lays out all the frames of that animation into a Sprite Sheet. And then I can actually change uh, these different settings I can preview what that's going to look like, um, you know, uh, when I when I actually use this. And for most sprite sheets, not only are you going to be exporting the sprite sheet, but you also need a data file, which basically says, "Hey, this frame of the animation is at this x and y position in the sprite sheet." Well, we have a variety of output data formats here. We have Sparrow, which, uh, which is an iOS game framework, which Starling is actually based on. You can export for Cocos 2D. You can export for Easel JS, which is actually for HTML5 games. Now, the one nice thing about this is you can add your own data formats into this as well. So there's a, essentially a template that you can create. So if you have your own data format for a game, you can create that, and you'll see it here in the menu. But I'm going to export it for Starling. And I'll just export that. And essentially what it's exported is the PNG and a data file. So really quickly, uh, I'm here inside of Flash Builder. And I already have a project, simple project created that, that uses that. So you can see here that uh, I'm embedding that sprite sheet PNG that was exported. And then I'm also embedding the XML file, that data file that was exported. 
And now with just a little bit of code here, um, I'm creating a texture atlas from that. And now I'm creating a Starling movie clip. Now one of the things you'll notice with the movie clip here in Starling is that I have additional parameters that I can send to the constructor. And this is what, what are the actual textures that I want to be in this movie clip. And I can also set an independent frame rate for this animated sprite. So you can see the Starling movie clip is the same, but it's been extended to add some additional game type elements to it. So if I run this now, here you can see that sprite sheet exported from um, Flash Professional running inside of Starling. And another thing I want to show you is, uh, where is it? Here is a side-by-side. -side. This is the same sprite sheet that's been exported from Flash Professional. On the left here, this is running in EaselJS, which is a, a framework created by Grant Skinner, which makes it very, very easy to do HTML5 Canvas if you're a Flash developer. Um, and here's that same sprite sheet running inside of Starling. So you can see Flash Professional now is going to be focused um, less on the, you know, where, where it's going to run in the end and more on being able to export to multiple, uh, you know, multiple end formats. So pretty cool. So another nice thing that's inside of Starling is built-in support for particles. There's a built-in particle extension uh, inside of Starling that allows you to take particles uh, that are designed in different tools. Uh, let me actually show you a couple of them. So there's a tool for iOS called Particle Designer. And this is, was originally built for specifically for iOS development. So I can come in and choose one of these presets, and I can see what it's going to look like when it's in iOS. I can actually go in and configure this, change all of these different properties here to, to visually create my particle effect. And then when I'm ready, I can export particle effects. Um, and one of the export options is um, for Sparrow, which is essentially what Starling is based on. So we can use these dynamic particle effects um, inside of our Starling projects really easily. So I'm building a game right now. It's a very simple game. Don't laugh at me, but uh, it's, it's starting to come together. Um, it's just called Space Violence, um, just because I, instead of trying to think of like a, a really like a cool name, I just said what what is actually happening? And it's just violence in space. So <laughs> let's just uh, let's just call it that. Um, but you can see a couple of things here. Is oh wait, hold on. It's it's in progress. So I don't even have like a uh, like a, a do reload thing. But you can see the particles that are on the ship are actually dynamic. See when I move from side to side, um, and those are yeah, it's a little hard. <laughs> um, but those are dynamic particles that were created in Particle Designer. Um, well, it's very difficult right now. Um, <laughs> Now, Particle Designer is great, but it's a, it's a Mac-only tool, which is a problem. So if you're using Windows, that's not going to work. Well, a, somebody in the community has actually created a Particle Designer that runs inside of the browser. And this is essentially very much like that um, Particle Designer tool, but it runs here in the browser. And when you actually change um, any of these properties, um, here we're seeing what it actually looks like in Starling, because this is Starling here on the left. So um, if you want to get the URL, uh, I'll, I'll blog this URL. Um, but it's a really good one because, you know, obviously it's cross-platform because it runs in the browser, but it's showing you really what it's going to look like in Starling because this is Starling. So definitely a very cool thing to check out. So, like I mentioned, we, we, uh, we funded this open source project called Starling. Definitely check it out. But there's other frameworks being developed for 2D in the community as well. And one of the best is called N ND2D. And let me actually show you 
uh, some demos of that one. So this is another framework that you can use. And here's just, just some random demos, but this is kind of like a parallax scrolling effect. Um, and let me just go through, cycle through a couple of these. Here's some particle stuff happening, uh, showing just uh, uh, animated sprites, uh, all these different features, mouse, mouse testing. Let me get to some of these other ones. They have tech support. I, I don't know, this is like a what, water. I don't know what's going on, but it looks nice. Underwater. Yeah. Underwater, yeah. And yeah, here's one again, just showing, uh, you know, speed, yeah. speed and parallax scrolling, particles. So that, anyway, this is also a really good 2D framework um, that you can use. Um, here's, you know, some really nice particle effects that are here. So all of these people in the community are creating these really nice frameworks because. I would have no idea how to program stage 3D at a low level because I'm not an OpenGL uh, programmer. It, that stuff is not what I'm used to. So it's nice that I can come and, and, and play with these myself and, and use them and let other people do the kind of the, the hard work um, for these things. Um, yeah, so here's another interesting one. It's called Genome 2D, just to show you an example. That's interesting. Forbidden. Why? Well, this worked about a half an hour ago, so I don't know. Um, let me see. Forbidden. Well, well, I'm not going to look for it. You can see. Well, maybe this is it here. Yeah. So this is another one, another example. Uh, let me, cycle through these. Now he's got actually, this is a thousand blitted images. Um, he's got some really interesting things. So this actually is, they have hierarchy support built into it. Um, here's a collision detection one. Um, having different viewports of the same scene, uh, which is a really nice feature. Again, different viewports. Uh, dynamic viewport. Um, so again, so remember each framework is going to have pluses and minuses. So familiarize yourself with the different frameworks. But, okay, how do you do that? So like, how do, how do we find out like what are all the cool stuff happening with Stage 3D? Well, somebody has actually created a really great website called flashdaily.net. And I definitely recommend you, you put this at the top of your bookmarks because, you know, he's updating regularly new Stage 3D demos and games new stage 3D frameworks, um, and it's a really great website. In fact, yesterday we were, I, I was looking at it and I hadn't even seen half of these things before. So definitely check out this site, um, you know, because again, it stays updated with a lot of the, the best stuff that's happening out there. Okay, so lastly, I just want to talk about performance. You know, obviously, Stage 3D gives you a lot better performance than um, than just the regular flash display list, assuming now it, that it's running on the GPU. Now, one thing I did want to point out, and uh, and uh, Anton was was talking about this yesterday, and he wanted to make sure that we mentioned it, and, and it's a good point, is that Stage 3D right now. Um, has some pretty strict requirements for which GPUs it's going to work with. Um, it's basically your graphics drivers have to be 2009 or newer in order for it to work on the GPU, or else it's going to use software fallback. Now, this is a problem because you know, not you know, there's a huge number of people who don't have those newer drivers. So we're working really hard right now to actually certify older drivers. So that we can, we, so we can fix this problem, so that you know a lot more people are going to be able to view stage 3D on the GPU. So, just to mention that. So let's look at at, at 2D performance. So this is a game demo, and it's called Waste Invaders, and we showed this in our session yesterday a little bit. But you can see that the tons and tons of stuff that's happening here. Um, and this is a good game because you, you can't die in this game. Like if I let these things hit me, nothing happens. 
Um, but you can see the, the tremendous performance that's happening here. Tons and tons of particle effects and explosions and things like that. Um, now, this game was created not with a one of the frameworks. This is actually created in low-level stage 3D directly. But this could easily use Starling or MD2D or any of these things. So really good, really fast, uh, pretty impressive. But the real question is, OK, that's great. It's running on the desktop. But what about on a mobile device or a tablet like an iPad? And I just wanted to show you what that looks like on so, the iPad. So how many of you are building mobile games, like tablet games and iPhone games like that? Or is this something you want to build, but you aren't able to do it right now? It's like that? Yeah, cool. Perfect. Yeah, so you want to build mobile games, right? With stage 3D. Is it like, is it like that, right? Is mobile popular now? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like, it seems like it's, it's, just, it's just a fad. I don't think... Yeah. I think in a couple of in a couple of months nobody will be. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah there we go. So let me show you what that looks like running on the iPad. So this is with again we're still working on stage 3D for mobile, um, but you can see we're also getting tremendous performance. Um, on the iPad with this as well. Um, so stage 3D for mobile is, is, uh, is something that, that is really, really important because uh, this is now approaching native level performance. You know, the, le the level of performance that you would use, you would get with something like Cocos 2D. Um, so really, really fast, really exciting. The, the reason why stage 3D is not currently out yet for mobile is that we need to make sure that it runs just as good across all platforms. Um, I'm happy to say that it, it, it are, we're running the fastest right now on iOS, which is, which is good. So if you have to pick one platform to be the fastest on, I guess I would choose iOS. But, yeah. um, one thing I want to say here, you can see it's a little bit jittery. That's not because of the game, that's because of the cable and TV and, and the VGA, right? Because the game is really smooth, you can see it's like 60 frames per second, which is like, uh, this is the world we live in, you know, like everybody wants to target. It's a 60 FPS world, yeah. folks. Yeah. If you're running at 59 frames per second, you <laughs> fail. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay. uh, but really, really cool stuff. So let, let's see what else Tom has on his iPad. <laughs> you, you, know, you, don't wanna, you don't wanna see my gallery? You know, no. Anyway, uh, let's let's run the Age of Defenders, you know, like. Uh, oh yeah, you can the, talk, talk about yeah, that. yeah. So you actually you actually helped out with this game, right? A little bit, yeah. So um, okay, so this is our game. It's a tower defense game, All right? So Story like that, All right? Yeah. So this is tower defense game. How many of you have seen this game? A couple of you. So it's perfect. It's quite new for everyone here. It's a tower defense game where you build towers and units, and you have to destroy the air base. You know, and it's also multiplayer. And uh, the unique thing about this game is that it was built primarily for browser for Facebook before. And then these guys that basically ported it got a got a source code. It's like 100,000 lines of code. Took it and compiled it for for iOS using uh, Adobe Air. And uh, let's pick one of these levels. And the unique thing about this game is that it uses multiplayer, and you can play like uh, Android versus iPad, you know, or like Android versus uh, desktop PC, or like iPad versus desktop and so on. So you can really have a game that is like uh, truly cross-platform and uh, multiplayer as well. Yeah. So I build a couple towers here. Yeah, I'm at the beginning, but at the end we will have like uh, 30, 50 towers, you know, and a lot of units, and it's it's still very smooth. And uh, the other side will now send some units against me. And I have to destroy them. It's like three of them right now. But at the end, it's going to be like 30 units coming to you, like tanks and raptors, like uh, from air and so on. And you, you have to build like uh, these laser towers, and uh, then you can upgrade them, and uh, you get more points. You have to build mines on these uh, things here, like that. That's why. It's, is it good? It's looking good, Tom. Yeah, so we can also chat with people and so on. Yeah. So yeah, 
So I basically exit the game. My dad. Did he? <laughs> yeah, that's good. So, so now Tom's going to take over and show you the, the 3D stuff. So I just focused on 2D. Yeah. You're adding a D, right? Yeah. So what, what, one other thing I want to show you quickly uh, on iPad is, is this game, right? Which one is this? Yeah, it's the... It's the Classic racer? Yeah, slot, slot racing. Slot car racing, right? Yeah. It's also a nice game. It's a nice splash screen. Yeah. So you can play like single player, you know. Okay, we're going to compete, okay. That sounds good. So this... You can hold down the finger, and basically like, uh, slow down. So the good thing about this game is that you can actually play in multiplayer as well. So that you can play in multiplayer, in table player, you're going to have a big two of them, right? Everybody got two, so you, so you can use like two fingers, okay? Oh, yeah. So it's four. Four, yeah, yeah, yeah. four players. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little fun. Go, go, go. I'm like yellow and pink, okay? Yellow and pink. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the. Uh, yeah. I know, I know where is the problem. It's, in, it's on iOS. Yeah, I disabled accessibility feature. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You, you got it. You got it. <laughs> Yeah, you have to disable all these accessibility features like... How do you zoom in like that? Uh, it's accessibility. Oh, it is? Yeah. It, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> it's, sometimes I, I let it to my grandma, you know, and uh, she uses accessibility features, you know, so... She needs an icon that big? Yeah, sometimes. And wow. I don't know. All right. I never got it. But so you're going to show 3D now, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm perfectly happy with 2D, but some people are really greedy. They want another D. Uh, <laughs> So, um, one of the projects I want to show you is called Project Ema. It's a like RPG game um, sort of concept uh, for social networks, where you have like your own uh, character and uh, like uh, you pick uh, the weapons and so on. So I'm, I'm going to be girl. Uh, I want to be girl in games. You know? Just in games or in real life? <laughs> Just in games, yeah. So, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is, this is how it looks like, you know, this is space. You got this girl, it's like five, four, three, two, one. Okay, go. Let's begin. And uh, I go here like that. And I have to like uh, cast spell, you know, and destroy these uh, guys here. Like that I can move here. You can see these particle effects. They're actually using um, software which is called Pyro. It's like particle designer, but for 3D, you know. So you can like design 3D particles in space. Like Lee was showing the particle designer for 2D. There are also the same software, like similar softwares, but for 3D, you know. So you basically design all these kind of things. You don't have to develop them, you know, because it's we are we are designers, right? We don't we don't develop particle effects features. So we use some sort of fighters, designers. Okay, you can walk here, like on the, the bridge, and uh, again you can see some water effect, you know, and you see it's like it's beautiful, right? So if you compare this to like recent games on Facebook, like Farwell uh, and so on, this is a really nice feature that is like uh, in front of us, like next year coming. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. What do, what do you think? Like, uh, is this something you want to play next year? So the, I'll admit this is not the type of game that I like to play. But uh, you don't like to be girl in the game? <laughs> no. Um, but maybe I'll, if, if I start playing it, I'll want to be a girl. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. No, but Zynga is also experimenting with stage 3D for their future games on Facebook too. Can I get a power? All right, that's good, Tom. If we can move on from this. Yeah, absolutely. So, so one of the other games I'm going to show you is, um, is this one. It's um, it's our demo from Epic. You know, I just want to, I just want to this. So this so it's running and in between because it takes some time to load. It's still prototype, right? Uh, I want to show you one of the other games. It's called Black Sun. 
and it's uh, developed with an engine called Minko. And uh, Minko is an uh, engine from France, and uh, these guys have been working a lot on uh, like compression algorithms, so you can really like take a game which is like one, 100 megabytes and compress it online, and this game was like originally like 150 megabytes, and they compress it using their, their tools, and right now it's like 9 megabytes, you know. So this is something you have to keep in mind when you're working on uh, online games. So, so I go. And, and the funny thing about this game is that you have to kill um, these guys, these aliens. They're, they're actually na Nazi aliens. So just walk Nazi around. zombies, right? Yeah, Nazi zombies, or yeah, something like that. So if Nazis weren't bad enough, they're zombie Nazis. Yeah. They're even worse. And you can see there are like these HDR effects, and it's like bloom effect. It makes it like look real. Table and so on, voila. So we move on to this room. We clean it here. I would say like this is like a remake of Wolfenstein, but for web, for future, you know? Yeah. Never played that. Like that. So, this is our demo I want to show you. It's, uh, it's Unreal Engine running in Flash, right? As, as we showed you, Epic Citadel, this is uh, Unreal Tournament, you know? So, how many of you played Unreal Tournament, like, uh, when we were kids? Everybody, almost. Perfect, so... Kids. Yeah. yeah. When, I was, when, I was, when I was a kid, it was Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> So you can see this level. You get this rocket launcher. You go here. You are this bad. because I was building a game that actually looks just like that, and then now I realize that, you know. So you can walk around to see how it looks like here. One of the good things about this, as far as working with Epic, is that, you know, they created these demos for Stage 3D, but then they came back to us and said, wait a minute, Stage 3D sucks. This is, this is what we need in order to make these, yeah. to make AAA games, essentially. So, being able to have Epic actually tell us what we need to do to put into the Flash Player uh, is really going to allow us to take it to the next level. So, um, you know, so we're taking all this feedback back from them. Uh, so again, if we can make games, if they can make games like this run well in the Flash Player, then most of the games that any of us are going to create are going to be, you know, no performance problems at all. Yeah. So it's it's really a stress test for us. A lot of new features, like you, you can see, the mouse look is missing here. Like uh, that's of course one of the one of the feedbacks we got from them. You know, so the mouse look is going to be in the next flash. Now, Tom, you are working here, so you don't don't just sit up there and yeah. play the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, so of course you know like uh, 3D is perfect for gaming, you know, but still it's uh, it's something that brings uh, new features to things like uh, corporate websites, you know, and like uh, microsites and. Uh, Experience websites like uh, where you have to like combine stuff together, you know, like um, let's say like a kitchen builder and so on, or you want to like uh, look around the car and see how the car looks like, you know. So before these websites were using like sequence of images when you were walking around or like uh, 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 rotating the car, it's been like uh, I don't know maybe hundred images, you know, and before you have to load it. Here it's just a couple textures and uh, just pretty mobile, you know, and you can change the color like that, you know. It's really, really, really nice. Can you change the wheels? Yeah, yeah. You, can, you can change the wheels, you know, like that. Yeah. So this guy.
yeah, it's really walking around. Yeah. Can you go in the car? Yeah, you can, you can, you can like, extend the sides, you know. Yeah, you just ride the car in. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, a lot of people are asking because of HTML5 and all of this stuff, what is the what is the future role of Flash? And these sites are what I consider to be this is where Flash is going to be used for for stuff that you can't do in HTML5, um, and it's going to be you know advanced games and sites like this. Um, so again, the as browsers are able to do more things. Flash is then going to move to more advanced use cases, and uh, so this site is a great example of of something that Flash is just perfect for, um, and that you wouldn't you wouldn't even try to start doing this in HTML5. It's just it's just not going to work. So one one of the other games that is definitely worth mentioning here is uh, Thank You Thank You Line. I, I'm pretty sure that most of you here are ever of what it, what this game looks like. So this is the next generation of the game uh, built by Alternativa, and uh, why does it work? <laughs> and um, yeah, Anton, when is it going to be online? Everybody's waiting for it. <laughs> and like, I, I can't wait. You know, like, it's it's really beautiful. You know, like you can you can switch different tanks. You know, you can buy new like uh, additions to tank and so on. You can shoot and so on. It's, it's a really beautiful game, yeah. and uh, be proud of having such people here in in, uh, in, in Russia and Ukraine you know, because it's uh, it's really good what you're doing. Here. But uh, again, a lot of people like uh, wonder. Okay, so this is like in a browser, you know, when we want 3D on mobile and so on, you know. So I want to show you how this game actually looks like uh, uh, when you when we talk about uh, mobile devices. You know. About a grandma. Yeah, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a uh, zoom. Perfect. So, um, And everybody's like wondering, like, what is performance, you know, wise, and uh, when are we gonna use it, you know? And everybody's like, uh, everybody wants to see that, you know. So uh, we want to show it to you, really. <laughs> yeah, we do want to. Yeah, perfect. Oh, so, so as you can see, I have, uh, I have here is a Thank You One application. Just run it. Loads, you know, and yeah, it's like uh, this is what it looks like. So this is this is running on my iPad, you know. What do you think? You know, that's pretty cool. Is if it? You look, yeah. Come on. So again, you know, like uh, not only 2D games with stage 3, but also 3D games, of course, yeah. you know, and especially mobile, like in the future. You know. So what? It's exciting stuff. I'm. Uh, I don't know how to control myself. Yeah. You know, I, I think we both want to explode. Yeah. The audience wants to explode. Um, maybe because they have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so we have, I think we have like two minutes or three minutes. We take questions about anything. You can ask questions in Russian or in English. It doesn't matter. Oh, right there. Uh, Thank you. So in the meantime, let me show you one of the things, uh, one of the last things. Like this is this is the shader lab from Ming. Oh yeah. It's it's actually very cool. Uh, it's for building shaders, and you, and you know like if you're building shader, you have to use this. Uh, Adobe Graphics Assembler language and it's Able. like Assembler, you know, yeah. like, like, what the hell is that, you know, like, what, uh, what is Able? Yeah, yeah what is Able like? It's not pretty. Yeah, it's not pretty, you know, and people, uh. people want to build shaders, but they want to build shaders, like, from a graphic designer point of view, as you were building the particle designer, right. uh, like, particles and particle designer, I want to build shaders with a shader designer, so this is Shader Lab from uh, Minko guys, and you can see, you connect these little bubbles here, and uh, this is basically the shader, Below here, like you can, you can see it here, and what you, what you can do here is that you can basically take 
and MP3 and apply it to the to the shader, you know, and see how so, see how it actually looks like. You know, like that. That's cool. That's really cool. So we have like a visual representation of the shader by connecting these things together. Yeah. And you can change things, I don't know what's changed, but we can try. Yeah. I don't know. You still have to know what you're doing. Yeah, that's the problem. You still have to know what is the mod about in this shader building. Right. Yeah. 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 You take that question. Hello? Uh, well, mouse look feature is really cool, but what about uh, full screen keyboard uh, restrictions? Currently, the user can only use uh, arrows, tab button, space. Yep. So, this is a big problem, I yep. think. So, that's also coming. Oh, <laughs> that's just, great. Yeah. Um, I, you know, we, I can't say exactly the time frame for that, but that is, you know, again, one of the things that, that Epic told us and stuff like that. So, Essentially, what we're going to do is when you go into full screen mode, you're going to be pretty much able to do it, to do everything. Mouse lock, right click, full keyboard, all of that stuff. Even in the browser, yes? Yes. The only limitation uh, in, the, in the beginning is you have to be in full screen mode. Okay. Mouse lock and right click and things like that are only going to work initially in full screen. But we're looking at then bringing that into, into regular browser. Yeah. Hello? I, uh, we'd like to make some really complex models for games. So what's about uh, software rendering in its future now? So you mean like uh, the software fallback for Stage 3D? Uh, the rendering can be on GPU hardware and the software if the GPU is not present or right. disabled. Uh, so uh, now it works really slow. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, uh, you know, in addition to trying to certify more uh, older GPU drivers so that more people can use GPU, uh, we're also looking at improving the software mode because, yeah, for most, for most large games right now, if, you, if you're in software mode, it's still not, it's not really playable, you know what I mean? So, uh, so software mode is also something we're working on. I will say that uh, one of the things... Uh, Angry Birds, uh, Rovio is actually building the next version of Angry Birds for the web in uh, Starlink, the 2D framework. And one of the things they did was was uh, give us all, they made all of these changes that made it really fast in software mode uh, so that, you know, things would run well. So uh, we're definitely working on making software faster. But, yeah. Uh, hello. I have some uh, special question. Uh, are we going to see uh, conditional instructions and shaders and uh, multiple render targets with features? How are you going to implement them in the next version of Stage 3D? Yeah, so you mean like loops and, and all these kind of things? Uh, loops, if statements and... Yeah, so, so basically with Minko, as, uh, as I showed you here in the shader lab, uh, what they did is they did wrapper in ActionScript around Agile. You know, so you can basically develop shaders in ActionScript and it's really powerful. So you can use uh, like the whole power of uh, ActionScript for building sh shaders like loops and so on. You know. So it really extends uh, the shader language uh, Agile with, with ActionScript features like mathematical features and so on. Yeah, and another thing like when Epic told us, you know, they said we don't want to use Agile, we just want to use like an industry standard shader language for stage 3D. So that's all stuff that we're, we're considering. So maybe in the future you'll have other options beside Agile that will have uh, more of these features. Um, yeah, because one of the, the feedback from these big AAA game companies is a Agile is not going to work for us. We need you know, some, some other uh, language that has more features. So yeah. we, e either way, we'll, you'll definitely be able to do that in the next version, whether it's in Agile or whether we are using some other more standard language. Yes, for instance, when you look at a Minko, um, they have this, uh, you basically build a class for, for a shader, and then you have like get output position and get output color, you know, and basically you return some flow or you return some sort of uh, like data for the shader. But you write in action pretty, so you don't have to write Agile because yeah. sometimes. So we're looking at improving that. But uh, yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Any more questions? Yeah. Okay. Um.
you know, just um, in the PC desktop uh, games, if I press escape button, I and most of the users uh, expect that they will have uh, the game menu. But uh, in first player now, if we press escape, uh, we just uh, have uh, we just exit from full screen. Is uh, it uh, will it be possible to handle uh, this button and don't do maybe adding additional HTML parameter to allow this? I don't know uh, to to allow programmer to handle this uh, escape button. Yeah, I mean, I've never, yeah, I've never heard that request specifically about the escape button, but um, uh, I, I have no idea. I can find out. I can pass that back to the team and, and see what they say. Yeah, well, we, we, we always have to go through the security process, you know, and uh, sometimes people press escape because they're like, oh, what, what's going on? What's going on? And, like, if you press escape, you know, and it goes back, you know, because with without escape, you can do phishing and all these kind of things, you know, on the website, so you can, like, display Chrome, like, in Flash, and then, like, let people pass yeah. your password for Gmail and so on. So one of, the, one of the, the problems with that is, and not just for Flash, but when you go full screen in anything in the browser, like, usually escape is to get out of full screen. Yeah. So, um, maybe. I, I just don't know, uh, don't know about that one. So. Hi, John. Hi, Lee. Hi. Performance of uh, iPad applications was uh, very impressive, and uh, I would like to show uh, this application to my customers. So, uh, is it available on the Apple Store, or where can I download them? So, well, we, we showed a bunch of different. The Stage 3D stuff is not on the not on the App Store yet because they're they're just demos. Like the the tanky one was it wasn't the the full game. It was just like a you know. Uh, something that you could move around. The Waste Invaders one, again, it's more of just a demo. Um, but we might be able to eventually release the, so you can actually put it onto your own iPad as a demo. And we can look at, at, at doing that. Waste Invaders, you can get it right now on the web. You know, you can get that on the web and then, um, so we'll see about doing that so we can release the, the code so that you can, you can build it yourself and put it on the iPad. But, but what I can say is that stage 3 mobile and especially error is like uh, it's one of the highest priorities right now. So we're working on that. We want to ship quality, you know, and we're like ship it uh, really good. You know, so that means uh, stage 3 for that. You know, but most of these games are actually using R 3.0. Without stage 3 are already available on apps or like uh, uh, Age of Defenders, Machinarium, and so on. Yeah. Any more questions? Yep. Okay. Can we somehow uh, to know uh, what uh, performance uh, has a user when uh, start uh, some application? So, because uh, uh, because of uh, big variation of uh, this, we can know what uh, how the game will start uh, with play in the user uh, using user device. What do you so, mean, like startup I mean, time, or...? I mean, uh, if uh, we have uh, many graphics, hard graphics, and, okay. and uh, the user has a low performance, uh, do we, can we somehow know what is... What is yeah, yeah you, you can get a frame rate, first of all. Well, we, have, we are working on... So, ideally, you would be able... We would have an API that would tell you all about the end user's graphics card. But we can't do that for privacy reasons. But what we're planning to do is, uh, you know, on, on Windows, there's like a performance index. If you look in, in, in like Windows, it will tell you like you're a you're like seven out of ten on the performance scale, and it, it you know that type of thing. So we're looking at adding that. So it would essentially be like a scale, and you could you could you could look at that property, and it would tell you how good the end user's graphics card is. It won't tell you exactly the graphics card and things like that because we can't do that. Um, but it will give you like a rating of how good the end user's card is. 
Like so, when you see the benchmarks of uh, hard drives and graphic cards, when you read about benchmarks online, there's some index like 900 uh, or out, out of like uh, 2,000 or something like that. Yeah. This is what we want to provide. Yeah. But um, before that, you can still check uh, FPS, you know, and do some upload into the GPU and see how it works. And, and you can always test whether it's running in GPU or software. Yeah, this is what you get. You get like information. Is it on GPU? Is it on software? Um, maybe a bit off top of the main thing, but uh, OK, we now get uh, cool performance of rendering, but uh, how about uh, the future of ActionScript 3 performance? Will it uh, yeah. grow in the next? So there are, oh. if I can comment on that? Uh, no. <laughs> of course you can. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there are a few things. For, there are a lot of things we're working on, of course, but uh, I want to I mention two things. We are working on adding uh, new types, float uh, and float 4, which will uh, have high impact on performance, especially for 3D and stage 3D and so on, you know. So it will be way, way faster than number because there is no like uh, so much overhead, you know. So there's one thing. And the other thing is we are working on concurrency. So you will have like sort of workers or threads, uh, like uh, in HTML or Java, you know, you can use threads and you can basically upload some parts like pathfinding and artificial intelligence to a separate thread on multi-core PC, you know, or even on a single core PC. You know. so, you, so you will be basically able to use like uh, multiple cores and uh, get out of the glitches, uh, which uh, carry of the glitches which you have in the game right now. So there are like two main parts. Uh, we are researching also uh, GPU parallelism, which is like uh, sort of uh, uploading some tasks to GPU if it's possible. And uh, we have shown a sneak peek of that at LB Max. So like bitmap processing on GPU and so on. And so hopefully it will, will make it uh, as a, um, eventually in the much better in the future. But uh, concurrency and performance for sure. Yeah, we're definitely working on improvements to ActionScript 3, um, adding features that people have been wanting, and also improving the compiler. You know, which has some serious problems. Yeah. With it. So, right so now. compiler, the Falcon, the Falcon, we are working on it. It should be like ten times faster in incremental compilation. You know, so, uh, that's good. Uh, okay, the last question. Uh, will it be possible in the future to, for user to change uh, stage three D resolution in full screen mode? For example, I have a large display and I would like to render only some full screen rectangle bit. So I don't want to use my large display resolution because the performance will be lower. Yeah. Well. Uh, so I haven't. Yeah, yeah. That's a great. It's a great cool. idea and a great point. I, I don't know that I've heard that before. But yeah. Uh, we are working on it. Uh, I know there is some sort of like bug right now that uh, it doesn't allow you to change the, the resolution of stage PD, but uh, in the full screen or like a st full screen rectangle mode. That one, uh, yeah, we are, we are aware of that and working on that, fix that in the, in the, in the next release. Okay, cool. Okay, uh, thank you a lot. Uh, I think our speakers deserve a good